I'm an Italian chef that from Italy I moved all the way to Texas to work for the very best barbecue restaurant in business to master the craft of barbecue. Now I'll teach barbecue worldwide. My name is Max and this is Texicana Barbecue. Texicana Barbecue everybody! So today how to trim a brisket or at least the way I trim it. Now we have this beautiful flat over here and we have a lot of fat in this brisket so my first gesture is to clean up a little bit this uh, uh, this extra fat uh, on the flat it doesn't really bother me uh, it bothers more the cutter when he cuts it, it tends to shreds and uh, it doesn't it doesn't really render so I just give it a little touch up over here and there of this extra fat I saved most of the scrap. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with the with the leftover trimming. A big chunk over here. Now this for me is good enough. I don't care about this corner because I'm gonna I'm gonna trim it off anyway. <clears throat> and now we have this side, okay? This side, as you can see, has a different color. It seems like it's cooked, okay? Uh, because when they slaughter the, the animal, and after, after they cut the brisket, they kind of uh, sort of pasteurize uh, the brisket. And, and this kind of meat is, it seems like it's cooked. So since it's already cooked, we're gonna trim it off. That's it. On the side. And the bottom part, it's looking good. Now, top part, which is most of the work, is over here. I call it over here the ear, okay? This will be the burn end. So now, when we cut a brisket, we go against the fiber, so it will be one slice, two slice, three slice. So, and this will be all the flat, the lean meat, okay, up to here, up to here. Then we'll turn the brisket around and we're gonna go this way. So this will be a delicious burn end also. And we'll keep going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this will be the last servable slice. Now, we're gonna have this part, okay, and we're gonna have the bottom part. This part is another burn end, the most delicious burn end actually from the brisket. And the bottom part usually goes in chopped brisket, sandwich and stuff like this. So, back to trimming, let's do this. Now the burn end, why am I cutting this if it's so, so delicious? Some people leave it, some people cut it, some people go even harder than the, the, what, I'm, what I'm doing. Uh, I don't like to, to leave it because <clears throat> It's, it tends to crisp up. So everything that sticks too much, every corner in a brisket, uh, it tends to burn. The shape of a brisket, uh, you, you guys will see, after we trim, it, it has to, it really looks like a bullet, okay? So it has to be very aerodynamic, no corner. And guys, trust me on that, I'm particularly picky about it. A brisket, the way it's trimmed, is the way it cooks. If a brisket is not trimmed right, in my opinion, it, can, it doesn't taste right, okay? So, if there is an extra minute to, uh, to spend in trimming, you invest uh, an extra minute, it pays the best interest. Now, this fat over here. This fat over here, I'll cut it off. And right away, I try, this is extremely, it has, has a lot of external fat. So, I'll do this move. It then opens up the brisket, so I start seeing the shape. Where am I going? What am I doing? Something like that. Okay. And I keep going this way. Okay, now, now we start seeing how the brisket is shaped. If I leave this, it won't make no sense because it will burn. This corner over here will attract so much heat. This will, be, will, this will burn, and in a, in, a, in a certain sense, it will carry the heat through all my brisket. 
uh, to all my strats and it will cook very unevenly. So it's very important to cut this off. So the shape that the brisket, uh, the brisket gonna have, it will be about this. Something like that, okay? We have to sacrifice a little bit of this, which really is not too much, you know. Uh, but this is the shape that I want. It's important, I, I found they have the best result if I do one shot. One shot, uh, like, it got the best result. So, let's do it. Here we go. By the way, this one, you can slice, I go through about a, maybe 100 brisket a day, so I cannot do it all the time. But this one, if you slice, uh, if you take the fat off, something like that. If you take the, the fat off and you slice thin, like this, okay, you marinate this with some sriracha, with a little bit of sugar, uh, a little bit of salt. You can put overnight in the fridge, then you put like lay down like this in a freezer for a few hours and then you put in a smoker and let it dehydrate uh, for a few hours and uh, this is gonna be some great uh, beef jerky, okay? Fat cut. The fat cut, the main goal is to even up uh, the fat. Sometimes the cow does a good job, you don't need to trim too much, sometimes it does an awful job. And you have, like in this case, and you gotta trim it a lot. What I don't want is pockets, okay? So pockets, this, if I go too deep, this is a pocket, okay? A lot of water and from the, uh, from the humidity and the steam of, of the cooking process and, uh, and, and the fat will sit in there and will kinda wash out my bark. Okay, so try not to have pockets. Over here, if it's possible, this is the point. So a lot of heat will, will pound all the time in, uh, in here. So if you can, leave the fat. Leave some fat over here, it will protect it. I don't like having this thing right around here. I'm gonna shape them up a little bit make it more uh, uh, as round as I, as I can. Seasoning. Seasoning, uh, we have two main ingredients. Welcome to Texas. Kosher salt, black pepper, cafe, mesh 16, whatever you want to call it, okay? This is the Texas gold. Okay, so I really, really like the uh, Texas pepper. It's one of the main ingredients in, uh, in everything I do, really. In salt and pepper, we trust. Now, there are many ways you can, you can adjust the seasoning. Everybody asked me for a recipe in seasoning, and I said, whatever you like it, you can do like Franklin barbecue style, you can do like 60, 40% uh, 60 uh, black pepper, 40% uh, 40% uh, kosher salt. You can do uh, three to one uh, of, uh, three of black pepper, one of salt, whatever you want. Personally, I do not like to put too much uh, too much powder in the in the in the seasoning. Okay, uh, you can also put some garlic. You can also put an interesting flavor is the sumac. Uh, you can put some paprika, you can put some celery salt, you can do, you can do whatever you want, okay? What I, my personal one, it's pepper, salt, a little bit of paprika, a little bit of celery salt, and a little touch of sumac. Okay, so we have our brisket, now we got a season, uh, seasoning. Now the slaughtering, you can use a little bit of mustard, not too much. Or, you want to use water? Sure, use water. Or, you want to use sanitizer? No, I won't recommend that. But, uh, this is only needed, and there is a whole mystery. Oh, 
A lot of people ask me, you use mustard, you do, you do this, you do that. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's, you cannot really taste the mustard at all. Uh, it's just a, a way, you can use canola oil, you can use olive oil, you can use whatever you want. Uh, it's just a way to help the, uh, the seasoning to stick. And also, if you just open fresh out of the bag, uh, you don't even need to do this, okay? I usually trim the, the brisket the day before, uh, and so it, 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 what it can happen in the fridge, they can dry it, the surface can dry a little bit, so that's why I do it. But if you open it fresh out of the bag, you almost you don't even need that. Okay, so with the mix, then we have salt, pepper, if you want to put whatever you want to do. Uh, I put a little bit of paprika, a little bit of celery salt, uh, and uh, sometimes, not all the time, a little bit of garlic. Uh, what I don't like uh, on having in a seasoning, is a very powdery seasoning very powdery seasoning i'm all about texas style barbecue I'm, it, for me the bark is very important so when i when i do some seasoning i try to keep as simple as i can salt and pepper and maybe some extra some extra kick be practical if you put garlic if you put this if you put that and at the end of the day you cannot taste it why you put it in the first place okay so Barbecue is simplicity. Keep it a simple, guys. Keep it a simple. Don't think that the more stuff you do, the better it will be. It's actually most of the time is exactly the opposite. You know, all the badass barbecue places and spots that I've seen it. A friend of mine that I've worked, they have a very simple concept. It's executed extremely well. That's all they do. We had a few steps. So we got our salt and pepper. Uh, we're gonna season our brisket. Seasoning our brisket, I'll start with the edges, then I'll do the flat. Very even. Try to be as even as I can. Flip around. Flip around. Again. Very lightly. Pastrami is very little. I usually put it over here. Uh, I, look, I usually put it in a hotter spot, but this is, is a very little pastrami. So, now what am I gonna do now? If you notice, know guy, the line, they're all very straight, okay? Like this. And this is very important. A couple of inches distance between one brisket and another, the way it's positioned, the way it cooks. So for me, very important, the position. I spend a lot of time uh, positioning the brisket. You can make very straight line. The brisket, to, to some extent, you can, you can shape the brisket. You can shape the brisket like that, right? Touch up, I'll try to, when I season a brisket, I'll try to do a, the best job that I can because it's not fun, and especially in the summer, to go in there and, and touch up your brisket and season your brisket, okay? So this, they look, they look pretty good, they look here and there. And that's it. Yeah. So right now we are about an hour and a half in the cook. The bark is start setting. Uh, actually, we're very close to two hour. Uh, and then quick check. Uh, little spritz just start getting color right now. Little spritz, that's it. You're just gonna make sure that everything is running smoothly, and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so now we're gonna wrap our brisket. The brisket is reached naked, a temperature of 170. We got the small cream, we got the fat cup, the white part on top of the brisket cooked. Right now, we're gonna cook this baby. We need to wrap for about uh, three hours. If you are not too sure or if you wrap a little bit later, then uh, 
uh, then, then 170, maybe check in uh, uh, two and a half hour. But so, always two pieces of butcher paper. The 18 inch is ideal. You can, right now, I'm using the 15, it's a little bit small, depending also what kind of brisket you have. So, I spritz with apple cider vinegar. The only purpose of spritzing is to wrap uh, tighter the brisket. Uh, the steam they will create uh, in the butcher paper is gonna it's gonna it's gonna dissipate more evenly okay so and this is how you wrap a brisket make sure it's tight and the ta the tallow and the apple cider vinegar they kind of help uh, to, to tie them up as much as you can but so it doesn't have to be open I see all kinds of stuff with this brisket this is open so it has to be the brisket has to look like this so what I did I did this move, so the fat cap is up, one, and then the second, and again, my fat cap is, is again up, okay? So this is a very specific move for wrap. Brisket, it has to go, it maybe when it's out, uh, out of the pit, when it's ready, uh, as we, we saw the feeling and everything, it might be around 205 to 10, something like that. What we're gonna do, we're gonna let it cool down, on speed rack. It's important to pull down slowly, okay? We're gonna put on speed rack, maybe three brisket, it's good. Three brisket for each uh, for each tray, and we'll let it cool down. When it gets to a temperature of 145, 150, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put in here. This big guy is a warmer, okay? The warmer, there, nowadays there are many different kind of warmer. This is, a, the brand is Oncom. This warmer costs $1,200. Uh, $1, it's like a, cheap, a very cheap version. Uh, the good thing is that this part is replaceable. It's like a draw. You can take it away and replace it. Uh, it's so cheap because, it's so cheap compared to a Vulcan example that costs, depends between four and $6,000 uh, because that has no insulation, okay? Uh, there is just uh, there is just metal, so it will probably gonna burn much more energy. So what happened? The brisket it will rest, it, it won't carry over. The mistake the more, a lot of people do they do everything correct, but the, the main mistake is that they gonna they put the brisket too hot in the warmer. What's gonna happen? It will keep carry over, carry on the cook over 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 for hours and hours, and and, and will be and will be dry out. Now. How do you know when a brisket is cooked, uh, is cooked well, if it's overcooked, or if it's, or if it's in a way we say it's tight? Uh, if, it's, if, the, if the lean part, talking about the lean part, if it fall, falls apart, uh, that brisket is overcooked. Means that it's been in the warmer too hot, if the carryover was so great, or you simply, you pull it too late. Uh, and it's gonna be overcooked, so it lose all the juices. If the, the lean part is too tight, so it's chewy, it, it, it really has resistance breaking down, means that the connective tissue, uh, it, it didn't break. So it didn't break and, and it's too tight. So that is a way to figure out where, where your problem is. But anyway, so now the brisket has come down, has been on the, uh, on the rack, and we can keep it in this uh, in this warmer for uh, I would say from depend if you're talking about prime about five hours up to 17 hours okay uh, and what happened with this uh, with especially specifically with brisket it will fix itself you know uh, also depend the way how you pull the brisket if you pull the brisket. Uh, what I, the way I pull it, I pull the, uh, the brisket just right on, okay? I, I let it cool down to 145 and I put it in a warm. What you can also do, you pull the brisket when it's a little bit tight, but you then, in, the, in that case, you take advantage of the carryover and maybe you put the brisket on an internal temperature of 160 and we'll keep cooking for another couple of hours and we'll finish up in a warm. So there are different ways, but if you want to keep it simple, just pull it, pull the brisket right on, and uh, and uh, let it cool down to 145, and, and you put it in a, in a warmer, and it will be great.
Okay, let's check it out our brisket. Here we go. That's nice. Okay, now, for people who are approaching our barbecue, this is our lean part, this is our fatty part. We got against the fiber, so what we're gonna do usually, what people do, this is the end of the lean, over here, this is the end of the lean. We cut over here. Okay, nice and juicy. And this is our fatty. Okay, this is our fatty. We have a little bit of fat over here. Take it off, which is delicious, but you know. This is our barn end. Okay, this is our barn end. And now we slice our fat. Now, if this brisket, as soon as you cut it, starts shredding like crazy, means this is overcooked. If it's a uh, If it's too tight, if it's too tough, means that the, there is tight, okay? This is a delicious barnet, this is my favorite part. This is a delicious barnet, I like it. So, and this is our brisket. As you can see, guys, as you can see, the, if you take a look at the fat over here, okay? This plays an important role. There is, doesn't have to be too much, doesn't have to be too little. Uh, let me show you a good example. You like it's kind of yellow, it's cooked, it's not too much, it's not too little. Uh, that's it, this to me is a, is a pretty decent slice of brisket, okay? The brisket, as we can see, you know, it's nice, it's tender, you know, has, um, it stays together, so it means that it's not, it's not overcooked. Uh, just with a little bit of pulling, it comes apart, so this is uh, this is a pretty good brisket.